I am joined by Leandra Foster, our cash flow, budgeting, and everything money expert. How are you today, Leandra? I'm doing well. How about you, Megan? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. Just uh, working my way through this week, as always. Love having our conversations in the Tuesday morning slot. Uh, and as we were hopping on, we were musing a little bit about last week, talking about that second shift and especially for women preneurs and, and women who choose to have careers, which all of us have to have two incomes now, um, how that pulls away from your cash. But I'd love to continue this conversation into, okay, awareness, great. Now I know Second Shift exists. Now I know this may be what's pulling away from my business. What's next? What do, what do I do? How can I put discipline and efficiency into my business so that, or even personal, I mean, we, you know, how can we take some steps to overcome the second shift? Obviously, there's personal conversations and things with spouses that we kind of, uh, we're like, that could be a whole week long seminar about how to handle that combo. But really, when it comes to our businesses, what, what kind of things are, you know, you had ahas around that second shift. So what, what are you doing in, around getting efficient in business to keep the cash flowing, even though you know, Maybe it's attracted. Yeah. So um, I'll address the first, the the personal side first. Um, if if I didn't, I think I mentioned it last time, but check out the book Fair Play by Eve Rodsky because she gives you the how to. I've been aware of the problem for years, but I never knew how what the solution was. And she gives you the solution and she's gamified it. So check that out. Um, and it's going to take a lot of boundary setting and bringing awareness to your partner who's been enjoying the luxury of just trusting that you'll get it done while you've been getting it done. So you're just going to have to start saying, no, you are going to have to be responsible for that. Yep. Um, Okay, so setting that aside, let's go back to your business now. Um, I think I might have shared again last week that a big part of what was wrong with my schedule was that I didn't trust that I could fill my schedule because when there are hiccups in the system, the family life system, it was my schedule that gave. And so that's a big part of it is setting that boundary of who's going to handle the, disrup the, the disruptions this week or who can handle the disruptions on certain days even. Um, and just saying, no, my schedule <clears throat> is as important as your schedule. And so I think that that's one big thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Worry, um, so that's, that's one big thing is knowing that you can trust your schedule. And I think that that's really important. Um, the second thing is if we get into the time, cause that's kind of what we we're talking about is the time piece of money. Um, my client actually had amazing results by focusing on time. So she had a month where she made, um, almost double her normal monthly revenue. And she was tickled pink. And then she said, but I'm exhausted. And I said, whoa, okay, we need to address that before we go on. Because if you're exhausted, you're going to say it's not worth making that much money. So let's figure out how to fill your schedule without feeling exhausted. And so what we did is she had several offerings in her business that she did. And, you know, from consultations, um, and she's a chiropractor, so chiropractic adjustments. And I asked her, which of these take the most energy, the most concentration, the most effort? Like, not, not that you don't enjoy them, they just take more effort. And she said, oh, the consultations by far, because I'm listening and I'm putting together the pieces of what they're saying. And I said, okay, when do you feel freshest? And she said, in the morning. So I said, okay, consultations, new, new client, new patient appointments are in the morning. What's easiest for you? And she's like, oh, adjustments. I could do those like in my sleep. Okay. What time of day are you, what time of day do you have the least amount of energy? She said afternoon. All right. Adjustments are only in the afternoon because before that her schedule was just whenever people could come in. And so as she started shifting that and adjustments are in the afternoon and, and um, the thought, the deep thought work was in the morning then, and we also built time in for her to um, take notes. Although she, she was admitting that she's having trouble with time boundaries because it's like, oh, my next patient isn't coming until. And so, you know, that's, that's another piece to work on, but 
getting the schedule so that the more uh, if, uh, more energy requirements happen when you have more energy and that the less energy requirement activities happen when you have less energy. And she has sustained that higher level of income for about six months now, I think. And, ha- and when I talked to her, she was laughing. She said, you know, I said, are you taking some time off? She goes, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm taking so much time off. So she, fe- you know, she feels rested and energized and she's still making that higher level of income that was double what she was making before without being exhausted. Without that exhaustion. I love that you're talking about, because we've talked about how time and energy, time and money are energy, you know, they're mm-hmm. all that equal play. Um, but finding when you are most energetic to do the hardest things, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I've, I've had this for a while where I'll talk to people. I'm like, okay, look at your to-do list. Now let's organize it by energy levels. And they go, what? And I'm like, again, what's the thing that you could do in your sleep? Mm-hmm. Like, just absolutely. Okay. I don't have to have a lot of energy to do it. it I get paid to do it. It's a paid thing. And I could just do it. Right. Yeah. Right. And you do. And for some people, they're not morning people. Great. Do the mindless stuff. Exactly. Morning. Oh, you get energy around 11. Okay. That's when you have your discovery calls. That's when you have your brain work. Or if you're writing, that's whatever takes the most energy, uh, you know, and also I'm going to add some things in there because this is part of flow, but it's also working on your business is usually the things that drain you. Mm-hmm. So focusing on working on your business when you actually have the energy to do it is another thing there as as much as like you said, the note taking or the the scheduling, but remembering those types of things, because if you can sustain a great work day, you know, where you're really, really working, working, working when you're paying attention to your energy. And that's exactly it. She actually doesn't see patients until 10 o'clock. And another one of my patients or another one of my clients won't be seeing patients until 11 o'clock because they've blocked out those morning hours for working on their business, building content, all those business pieces. So they don't even start seeing patients until 10 or 11 o'clock. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because energy output matters. Like having Mm -hmm. the ability to give the energy when you've got it, you know, and, exactly. and here I I'm reading a book. Uh, I can't remember who it's by. It's called start finishing. And it's talking, it, it's, it's talking about similar things, how everything's a project mm-hmm. and all projects take energy, whether it's a fun mm-hmm. thing or not fun. It, everything's a, an energetic product project and putting it when you can actually commit to it, to, to, to be right. disciplined enough to complete a task because the, you know, the whole project is running the business, but there's tons of little tiny tasky projects that have to happen. And we all, you may know them, you may not, but when you do know them, how often have we said, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Oh, I'll stick that between calls. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. You're going to the bathroom. You're getting some food. You're taking five minutes. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm not working on your business. <laughs> Maybe next time we should be talking about outsourcing because that was, that's the next thing of like, what can you get off your plate and, and have to someone else? I just had that conversation with my new VA yesterday. I was like, I want this to be your project and I want you to delegate tasks back to me rather than the other way around. Exactly. And and learning to utilize and again, the the book I'm reading is talking about your team and your team's Mm -hmm. not always, and I'm going to say this, what he recommends is your team's not just your business team. It's your, it's your whole team. Who's your friends? Who's, are your parents involved? Is your partner involved? Are your kids involved? <laughs> <Back here> again. <laughs> it's your whole team because if <clears throat> your whole team isn't showing up, you maybe you've got the wrong team or you're communicating wrong. And so it's all of this time energy thing that honestly, what Leander's getting at and what I'm just going to say is it all puts money in your pocket. Absolutely. And then we've talked about the basics of charging properly for your services and making sure you're charging enough for everything that you're, you know, not giving away the freebies and things as as much as um, you are getting paid to do things as part of it. But this is a huge part is when do I do the things I'm not getting paid for so I can capitalize on the things that I do get paid for for? 
Absolutely. It yeah. all puts it back in your pocket. So love these conversations that we're having. They're not necessarily the nitty gritty of here's how you make money, but they are all part of how you make money because it's the parts that we forget. We're like, yeah, I make a plan. I've got a budget. I do my bookkeeping and I'm still not making money. Well, <laughs> yeah, you've money. got to get this. These pieces, I think that's the biggest part that I realized in my business. And I think I've said this before is that I've had two silos in my business where I topped the practical side of things and I did the one-on-one -on -one coaching. But when I married the two together, my clients' results just went through the roof. And so, yes, we do have to talk about the practical things. If you've never had a financial education, you absolutely need one. But you also got to take into account all these other things that play into why you wouldn't be willing to make money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Leandra, as always, thank you so much for joining me and giving us some more wisdom about how to bring more cash flow into our businesses and our lives through some maybe not, not traditional ways that we think of money. And I think it's super important that we address the whole human, not just the pieces and bits and parts. Absolutely. So appreciate this and look forward to chatting with you next week and seeing where the conversation goes. Sounds great. I'll see you then. Okay.